Thank you, Mike, for the introduction. Hello, everybody. I am uh, Muhammad Adili Norasikin. So the Soundbender is uh, work with my colleagues at the University of Sussex, Diego Matrinas Placencia, Spiros Polychronopoulos, Gianluca Memoli, Yutaka Tokuda, and Sri Ram Subramanian. And this work is funded by EU, Ministry of Higher Education Malaysia, and University Technical Malaysia Malacca. So we, our work makes use of ultrasound for levitation and haptics. This follows the previous works. For example, levitation of a point um, of a polystyrene ball and then manipulate in a 3D space, or levitations and rotate them. For example, make a display. And also a different format, for example, this um, glove uh, and with a levitated object. So the main point here is how are we different from the previous work? So we enable a levitation even on top of passive object, for example, this toy, you can see, and we also enable haptic feedback around these blocks that blocking the ultrasound, and we enable the flow control of non-solid object. And not only that, we also can manipulate them, even though blocked by this object on left, right, top and bottom. And then how come we come up with to this solution? So let me first introduce you to the existing approaches that uh, have been around in uh, sound field. So for example, if you have one transducer and a reflector on top, you pretty much can create a levitation, uh, uh, levitate the object by just having a um, standing wave. So, but this is pretty much you can have. You can also increase the amount of transducers. Now you can create a focal point. So this focal point um, can create haptic feedback. This is what you will see in ultra haptics. This is what they they, they does. So um, you can increase the complexity by creating multifocal points to create um, some sort of uh, mid air haptics object like like a sphere in the air or you can increase the complexity by having only one single transducer, but you have an um, object that levitates on top, so you also can manipulate it. So the, in, it, in, this uh, sound field increase throughout the examples I showed you, and they share a common problem. So what the common problem is, to create this focal point, for example, you need to have a contribution of all transducers and then you will have this um, pressure point over there. But uh, one question, how about if I have this obstacle? So this is what happened to your field. You destroy the field because of the scattering effect of the obstacle in the middle of your, the uh, transducer. And then that, if you stick your hand on top, you will not be able to feel. No, nah, you're not going to feel anything. If you Try to levitate object, nah, you're not going to get any object fly. So, yeah, we come out with a, come across to this paper, how are we going to fix it? This is how we fix, try to fix it. Ah, we found this, this is a, a good paper, look how it bends. So, this is paper from Zhang um, in 2014. So, what he did in this paper is he just tried to create acoustic cloaking, you see. Uh, try to move the sound, bend, avoid the obstacle, and then meet at the top. And this object will not scatter and destroy the field. Also, we can say invisible. Hey, invisible. So if I have levitation point on top and haptic field on top, yeah, I should have not destroyed it. Be there, right? So, yeah, let's give it a go. How hard can it be? Um, it turned out to be, you uh, know, um, it's not getting there yet. See, the, the, the pressure across the line is getting there, but not there yet. Oh. So we start thinking about what was wrong, because it's simple. Just put the phase on the phase array transducers, it should be there. But we try to figure out after simulation, after a few months later, I mean, a few hours later, and then we found out that a hey, the size of the transducer is 10.5 mm, and if we look at the features of the wavelength itself, it's 8.6, which means 
the ultrasound speakers is larger than the wavelength. Okay, if I ask you to draw a Mona Lisa or using your thumb or your hand, you're not going to get the Mona Lisa with the amount of detail compared to brush, isn't it? So this is what happened here. Now, let's take a look how we can fix this. Let's say metamaterials. For those who don't know what metamaterials in acoustic is, it is um, a clever a plastic that <laughs> <laughs> can somehow um, go to these channels and then by changing the channels you can somehow change the phase delay. Uh, okay, and the, this is a, actually a work by Memoli et al. So he provide, and the teams provide this very good, nice looking bricks. Hey, why not? Let's try this out, man. So <laughs> again, we try, we implement it. Boom, that's it. It's showing us that it's good, looks good, and nothing's there, clean inside in the cavity, if you see. Yeah. Ah, this is what we are, man. Now, there's another problem. It's clever, but it's not clever enough. It's static, you cannot change it. Once you print it, that's it. You're done. So, can we get both worlds, like uh, getting the best of these both worlds and make uh, them a, a good prototype for, let's say, hybrid modulator? By having the complex field created by this static, clever plastic thing, and then the modify the field by using ultrasound transducers at the bottom. Hey, we also need to know what's the gap, right? It's not, maybe not, maybe it's affecting the sound field or not, we don't know yet. So in this paper, we will provide exploration of our hybrid modulators and we describe how we fabricate the metamaterials. We describe the algorithms to control it and we also sort some other stuff like the gap, so we will recommend some looks. So this is a simple idea, I say. Bending beans, it helped or forced us to explore this space. We stuck in it, but what we want to share is our insight on hybrid modulators. We summarize this in five steps. So the first two steps is only for self-bending beam. But the other three can be done for, can be used for, uh, reused for other sound fields. So let's jump to first step. So how do we compute uh, the self-bending beam? Nothing fancy here, actually. It's just a natural spline. And then um, we just, what we did here is um, first we find the geometry, of course, and make sure it's not uh, occlude the object and then we create natural spines but what we did at the bottom and top we make sure they align to that red dashed line and then we go to the next step this is we just apply the zunk method zunk et al method where the acoustic cloak remember and then um what he did he this work is uh, you get a one point at self-bending beam and then trace back to the wave front and then you try to map the face on top of the metal materials. But thanks to the first step that we stick, uh, we fix the first point and the second point at the top, uh, the, the final point at the top. So we get a sim we simplify uh, we simplify the Zhang et al method and we get. Uh, we get it simpler and it's in our paper. So um, now we discretize by having this set 16 bricks and then they are real numbers. So you can have, um, take one, for example, uh, the red color and then the red color refers to um, bricks number 16, which is pi. And then all of them, we just come out to the one uh, to 1D profile. So because of our envelope is 360, they are enclosed, so we just revolve them. And then by revolving them, now we have, this is the fabricated and printable, uh, printed uh, uh, material bricks. 
for those who don't have, uh, maybe will deal with non-axisymmetric, um, I'll say, then you can check our papers because we provide some um, equations also for uh, non-axisymmetric. Now, we have the transducers at the bottom and then a metal material on top. Turn it on, you get that shape and it's levitating. So now we don't want to dynamically control them. How we do it, you just change the pattern of the phase array transducer and now it tilt to the left or to the right. Now you can change the levitated object. And we introduce another pattern and then we can increase the height in Z axis direction. So how we do this? We actually borrow um, optical tweezers. So what uh, optical tweezers provide is like if you have a point and this point you can trap them and then move it in three dimension uh, space. But they didn't provide how you going to modify the field. So let's say what we do is we, we find a point, so let's say this point. So by having this point, we can now introduce a delta X and delta Y. So the diffraction grating will tilt it to the left, right, or backward or forward. And the delta Z, increment Z, will be the term to move it up and down. We also um, uh, in, introduce the switching between tactile feedback and levitation trap. So for those who um, want to use um, for a levitation, or you can use it um, with our method. Now the final step is spacing between them. So we recommend for this setup, for our transducer is 0 0.75 uh, mm, uh, sorry, 0 0.75 lambda. Why we come across to this? Because we do some observation, oops, not appear, but yeah. Okay, so we do some observations and we found that if you refer to 0 0.5 lambda, and you'll see this bumpy kind of final transmitted pressure, which is not really good, they're not homogeneous, but if further you go, the displacement, and then the more homogeneous it is. But there's an interplay between them. So if you go beyond the like 0 0.75, you cannot get homogeneous, so we try to get this trade, um, um, a correct one, like you have a very good pressure and then you get a very nice and homogeneous pressure across the distribution. But if you see at the end of this distribution, it becomes low and then we need to add extra. That's why we call padding. You get extra transducers just to support and make it more homogeneous, get good result. Then we do some evaluations. This is the field. At the top is a simulation. Bottom is the measurement. And it's good correlation. So the applications is if you've seen in the video, like it's a tactile feedback around the object and levitate it object, uh, levitate around the object and also control flows. But what is the most interesting for us is we can create now um, play with these um, metamaterials. For this one is example, a hologram of acoustic for acoustics where we can create icons, for example, we're using this. This cannot be done by uh, ultrasound speakers. So by having this, for example, let's say board game, you can change and swap between the obstacle, between the toys, and then have haptic and then levitation. By having a new type of uh, metamaterials to get this, um, it be more engaging and more interactive for the users. <clears throat> So with the takeaways, I would say, I wouldn't say that um, ultrasound speakers is bad, but it's, they are versatile, of course, but a complex field, if you want to go to complex field, you quite limited. And the hybrid modulators can offer like a complex fields. It's just a less versatile, you have to, you know, couple it with uh, uh, transducers. But uh, if you try to go for, uh, uh, create a sound field, try first with the ultrasound speakers. If you think you cannot get it, then this is, might be the, the answer. For well, that, then uh, I, yeah, thank you, that's all. Uh, if I can take any questions, I'll be happy.
<clears throat> uh, we're out of time, but we could take one question. If there any. Thanks for a great talk. I really enjoyed it. Um, could you give us an idea of the a degree of um, angular steer you can get around an object? How far around a corner can you go, at, firstly? And secondly, can you tell us um, what the effect is on the uh, degree of maximum pressure you can exert compared to not having the object there? Thank you. It's, it's a nice question. Um, so because of we doing this, um, if you so the image of uh, how we create the curve is actually at tracing back to the uh, linearly track back to the uh, ultrasound speakers. So if I would say if the speaker can still see the point and trace back to the, the, the speaker, then you'll be having it. So if, you cannot, if the speaker cannot see this point, so it's worth to increase more speakers. And the second question was, uh, again? Um, just uh, what, what the effect is on the amount of power you can actually exert compared to having the, uh, not having the object in the way. So is it just the ratio of the number of transducers that can see, can see that particular point? Um, for uh, um, the object, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, so is the amount of pressure you can exert at the point of interference of the, uh, of the, of the acoustics reduced to the, uh, in the same ratio as the number of transducers that then can't see that point? So um, because of if you have this um, uh, envelope and the and pressure is not scattering around, mm. so um, I don't think it is a matter. So uh, just this, get the geometry right and then, yeah, you get, it's not be, you know, it shouldn't be a problem. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right, so two announcements before we go. Uh, there's a Lasting Impact Award. It's happening right now upstairs. And the second thing is that uh, in your badge, 